Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. Today we're going to create a very beautiful North Carolina landscape. It's going to be a mid-ground painting, lots of stuff happening pretty close to us, and we are going to be putting in some sky to begin with. As you can see on my canvas board there, it's a 9 by 12 inch canvas board, I have already marked in all of the trees, my road, and where the back line of trees is meeting at the vanishing point. And so I have sort of a guideline to follow as I'm putting in the colors. I've drawn this in freehand, looking at a photograph that I'm working from, and now using a small filbert brush, I'm putting in lots of small delicate strokes using a mixture of the cobalt blue and the titanium white getting lighter as i reach the tops of the trees i don't mind if i cross over the lines a little bit into the top of the tree line as the color is going to extend down into the leaves and I can paint right over it as it dries because today I'm using acrylic paint. My palette is as follows. Cadmium red, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt blue, titanium white, and ivory black. Going to put in some of the blue mix into the layer of trees. As we paint along, we want to be careful not to cover up all of these as there will be light from behind the trees as breaks in the leaves happen, so we need to have some of the blue poking through the tops of the boughs. Let's make some brown. To make some brown, it's very easy. You mix together cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and blue. Mixing all three of your primaries will yield, very quickly, brown. Whenever you mix together complementary colors, you always get brown, red and green, purple and yellow, blue and orange. Each makes brown because when you mix those colors together, you're basically mixing up all of your primary colors. Here is a little bit of the green to the brown. We want to have a very earthy green color. And we're going to just dance some darker shadows in the back here quick little strokes and that's going to be a mantra for this piece always use quick little strokes this is an impressionist piece after all and to get that effect we always want to be delicate with our brushwork just dot it in here and there a lot of this is going to be covered up anyways as we work in layers so don't worry about being too precise at this point just dot it in as needed The 
This is going to be the base for the shadow at the bottom of the trees. We're going to come back in with some darker green later on, and the brown underneath will slightly show through and get a darker effect. I'm being careful to put these between the trunks of my trees. Mixing together here the brown mix with some more yellow. Just want to put a little bit of something in the foreground, kind of hold the space down. And here is the first mixture of the light green, that sap green, with cadmium yellow. This is going to be a staple for this piece. Keep making more and more of this color as you need it. This is going to be the basic mid-range color we're going to be using for this composition. Lots and lots of light green will be utilized. It's going to be the lighter of the medium greens that we'll use for this piece. You can see it lays over the brown quite nicely. And we'll start to put in the, I would say, background for these foreground trunks. Because I live in a forest here in beautiful North Carolina, up in the Piedmonts around Raleigh, you get lots of these thickly nested trees and you can see through them, but it's a lot of branches and varying heights of the hill. And so we get to see a lot of just kind of a mass of green behind it. So that's what we're gonna paint in first, the background, and then we'll come back in with the foreground. However, there are lots of variation in light and shadow and sky and it all sort of comes together in this back layer what we don't want to do is have a solid kind of flat green mass we want to have variation and different changes in color and intensity happening in the background so that it looks more realistic if it was just all the same color sap green in the background it would look very flat it wouldn't read correctly Bringing in more of the yellow there as highlights. And then a little more blue and a little more sap green, and this will be our darker green for the shadows. By playing the darker colors against the lighter colors, we get this nice variation in our background layer. It's a little tricky putting in this background layer, however, because I'm leaving room for my tree trunks. Ideally, you could just fill the whole background layer in and then come back in over the top with the trunks freehand. I'm leaving them in because I want it to match the picture more accurately. You have to be careful about leaving a halo of white around your tree trunks if you do this method. Be careful about that. You have to make sure that you blend everything together nicely and do cover up all of the canvas behind. this photo in the middle of spring this year the light was so vibrant and given where the Sun was in this partly cloudy day near the base of the trees it's going to be much darker but as we get higher up they become lighter and gain more of a yellow cast same idea here playing the lighter colors against the darker colors to create some contrast and variety Touch more sap green and yellow. I'm 
I'm going to repeat this process until I have the majority of the right hand side of the canvas covered with these greens. Darker mixture, played against lighter mixture, lots of little strokes, sort of pointillistic in my approach. Very impressionistic, for sure. Filling in the tops of the left hand bank of trees. And pulling in some of the darker green mix here at the bottom in the distance. Pushing that back into space with more blue. The yellows will tend to come forward and the blues are going to recede farther back into space. A touch more sap green. Again, just filling in the space, but being careful not to cover up all of the lighter blue areas as we need some to show through. Don't worry though, because we're using acrylic paint, if you cover up too much of your blue areas, you can always put them back in at a later time. Just wait for the paint to dry, and then you can do so. Toss some light green mix down here at the bottom. I usually work from top to bottom, but today I'll just kind of bounce around as I feel. It's not that big of a canvas, so if I get bored with an area, then I'll move somewhere else and come back to it at a later time. A little bit of the brown mix here, just to break it up. On the left hand side over here I have a guardrail and I'm going to leave some of the white there so I have space to put that in later on. Just bringing in more of the mid-tone sap green for contrast. We have a few branches sticking out across the top here. We'll put those in right now. A little more brown mix, a little more green. Using just the tip of my brush for these reaching out branches. A little darker now, more of the brown, kind of indicating branches maybe.
more of my light green mix. Bringing in lots of the yellow. On this channel, I typically paint quick pieces and try to be as efficient as possible and move rather quickly, simplifying areas and being a little more abstracted and more impressionistic in my approach. This is definitely impressionistic, don't get me wrong, but it's not as abstracted as I usually do or as I can do in other videos. It's also more complex a subject matter than I normally deal with because of all the variation in the trees. This is actually the first time I've painted a forest in this way. And I feel like it turned out pretty well, given this is my first foray into this particular subject matter. I thought it would be fun to show you all what it would look like if I took my time, more of my time, but I thought it would be a nice change of pace to have two longer videos showing a complete painting. And as you all know, I gave this painting away very recently this last week in my 1500 subscriber impulsive artistry giveaway. Thank you all, by the way, for subscribing to this channel. It means a lot to me, it keeps me motivated to keep painting, and I really appreciate it. All of your support, your comments, your likes, when you share my videos, thank you so much. Brought in a little bit of the white with the yellow and then now with the green. These are going to be some lighter highlights. When I need something to be very light, I'm going to add more white to it. Using that sap green to fill in the space, better to find that guardrail and fill in the left hand side pretty well. Touch more white here in the foreground, lighten up the mix, a little more of that lighter yellow. Lots of light coming through here. I'm gonna use that yellow to really represent the heat intensity of that light. There is a guardrail across the way on the right hand side as well, so we'll be careful not to cover up all of that too.
Just dancing some lighter mix over here, just filling in the space. Grass is easier to paint than all the fiddly changes in the leaves, so I'm buying a little bit of time as I think about the background on the right hand side by working on something that's much simpler to do, the grass. The road gets very narrow right there, can't see so much of it because it gets to the top of the hill, and then it starts to widen out again as it emerges over on our right. I stopped and took this photograph because of the dramatic angle of the hill. I pulled over, got out of my car, kneeled down and took this shot because I liked the way the road curved and thought it would be a great composition for a painting. More sap green, bringing in some of the darker colors so that the lighter areas really appear to be extra vibrant. Bringing in more of the lighter colors here at the top right. You can see where I've marked out a bunch of these trunks because I'm leaving in lots of gaps working in between my pencil lines which helps me distinguish the foreground from the background. Try to focus your darker and mid-tone colors to the middle to bottom half, and then keep your brighter colors near the top. And if you do so, you should end up with a painting that reads very well. There are areas where the darker color moves up higher, and there's more light flickering through so it's down lower.
don't worry about making it perfect. We're just trying to get the suggestion of the colors, suggestion of the light, as best as we can. The viewer's eye blend everything together and form the picture. Just try to get the values correct, and the rest will take care of itself. Using the darker color here to break up little gaps in the guardrail. Blending a little bit of darker color at the bottom here. And then back to my lighter mix. This is just a game of counter change. Lighter areas played against darker areas. That's it, it's pretty simple. Keep your brushwork light, keep it active. Little tiny marks here and there. Nothing fancy, it's not as hard as it looks. If you're following along at home, I suggest that you mark it out in pencil and just have fun with it, really. Just try to do the best we can and not worry about all the little details. They're not that important anyways. When I'm painting, I'm thinking about shapes, really. And I'm thinking about areas of light and areas of dark, and that's it. It may look rather detailed right now and becoming more so as I'm painting along here, but that's just because I'm using a small brush and putting lots of little dabs and dashes. When I was painting it at the time, I was thinking this part of the photograph is more yellow. This part is more of this mid-tone green. This part is very, very dark green. And that's all I'm thinking about. What emerges is a much more detailed looking piece and lots of changing, shifting colors. But at the time, I'm not thinking about any of those things. Really, I'm not. Back to my lighter sky blue mix. I feel like I lost some of it, so we're gonna bring it back in. Best to wait until some of the other green has dried, but I'm a little impatient and I'll put it in right now. And 
and we'll cover some of this up again with more of the green, I am sure. If you find that your painting's looking a little washed out, maybe you've used too much white. To counterbalance this, put in more of the darker sap green. If it's too yellow, you also can use more of the mid-tone green. If you really need to have some darker areas of contrast, mix together some blue and sap green, and that will help create some rich, deep greens for you to use. I keep going back to my mid-tones because I need them to be there strongly for my lighter areas to read correctly. If I don't have enough of the darker greens in the picture, it's not going to look very satisfactory in the end. Bringing in more of the earthy yellows will also help it from looking too washed out. For contrast, I'm bringing in more of the cadmium yellow on the right hand side. Remember that yellow is going to move forward and the blues are going to recede. Anywhere I want to push back into space, I'll use a darker bluer color. Anywhere I want to push forward, I'll use more of the yellow. Here's some dark brown mix. It's cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, sap green, and ivory black. Basically, I'm mixing up all the colors except white to make a dark brown. The three primaries make the brown. The green adds kind of a greenish undertone to it. And the black, of course, makes it much darker and more intense. I can use this for my tree trunks. Take a liner brush, very thin liner brush, fine detail brush, and start to put in these tree trunks with our dark brown mixture. Mm -hmm. 
I do like painting these kind of paintings, but they take a while to put together. We're about halfway done with the piece now, a little under, halfway done, and using these small brushes can be a little tedious, to be sure. However, being patient is definitely worth the results. Touch more red into that one, by the way. This trunk is going to go right off the top of the canvas because it is so close to us, we can't see the top. And we'll put in a few more beside him. In fact, this part of the wood was very, very thick with limbs and trunks and branches. The Piedmont is very dense, so beautiful to travel through and drive through during the summer and spring. Very vibrant with all the greens and everything. So lovely. Great place to live. Don't feel like you need to make all your tree trunks perfectly straight. In fact, they look better if you have them bending and curving and changing direction. One or two can be perfectly straight, that's fine. But if they're all that way, mm, it would look better if they were all not so perfect. It needs to look organic and natural. Things rarely grow perfectly straight. Some of these will disappear before they reach the top, others will continue right off the top. Just depends on the particular trunk. And don't forget to toss in a few branches here and there. In general, they should be thinner the farther they get from the trunk. If you have a little mistake like I do, and it gets to be too busy, we can just cover it up with a little more paint, and it never happened. Here's a dirty brush, and we'll just dab this over, filling in where needed.
Working on getting rid of those halos, where the white of the canvas is showing up. I left more room than I needed for these trunks, so we have to get rid of the white around them. Bringing back in some of the light green here and there. Once again, getting rid of the white of the canvas showing through. back in some of that lighter green mix, just kind of cover up some of these very easy to shape things quickly, just bringing in some more of the paint. Back to my dark brown with my liner brush, and we'll put in a few more of these trunks. Toss in a few more branches here and there. And another trunk over here.
little more of the darker green mix. Again, just filling in the gaps where the white canvas is showing through. And we are almost done with this first part of this painting, North Carolina Road. Thank you so much for listening and watching me paint today. It's been fun hanging out with you. I'll be back with part two very soon. Take care.